As you can see, I've already went ahead and thrown my patty, and it's straight up and down because we're going to be throwing a cylindrical form. And we're going to start off by opening it up in the center just like we did in the bowl video. So I'm just pushing right down into the center, and I'm leaving enough clay in the bottom for this particular mode so that I can trim it later. You don't have to do that, it's just personal preference. And if you want to test how much clay you have in the bottom, you can always take your tool and clean it off, like a pointer tool, or this is an embossing tool that I like to use, something really thin, and press it down into the middle. And then you can see when you visually, in the middle right here, you can see um, how far it went down, and that's about the thickness. And compress it back down if you do open it up. So when you're opening up the floor of your mug, you're going to be opening up slightly wider than the width. And remember when you're pulling out, just like with the bowl, you want to pull at the same speed as your wheel. And it takes practice to learn how to meet that pace. So I'm just wetting it, and my fingers are wet, and I'm just going to pull towards me with my thumb at the same speed that my wheel is going. Now, I'm going to go back in and compress that floor. Compressing is just what it sounds like. It's getting all this clay pushed together, and you're going to try to prevent cracks in the bottom of your pot. You can also take your wooden rib, and you're going to be using this side up against the wall of your mug. So you wet it, just a little bit, and then you push this corner down to the where the wall of your patty meets the floor of your patty. And you'll see the edge that it starts to form. You don't have to press, off, press down that hard, and you don't want to take off too much clay at that point either. Now we're ready to pull. So I'm wetting the outside and inside. For this particular clay, I don't need that much water, um, but you want to just make sure that it's going to glide along with any clay that you're using. And you can do the waterfall, which is you wet your sponge, and then you put your fingers on the clay, and you let the water slide down your fingers. Pretty much it. You're going to be using more pressure from the outside than the inside of your pot. So your outside finger is going to be pushing while your inside finger is going to be meeting that pressure but not equaling that pressure. You're just going to be using this finger on the inside to guide the other hand. Now I'm going to start with doing my next pulls and I'm just going to be paying attention to the same thing which is wetting the surface before I pull on the inside and the outside, releasing pressure towards the top of the pull, and paying attention to the slip every single time that I make a pull, and also wetting your hands before every pull. And I have an air bubble in the top, so this is another chance to teach you a technique. So you're going to use the pointer tool, and you can slightly wet it. And then you're just going to see like where you think the end of the bubble ends towards the top of the cup. Mine looks like it's just in the rim, so I'm just going to take this and 
slowly turn on my wheel and then slowly insert it in and keep pushing until it goes through the wall of the pot. And then you lift it off. And then you'll want to obviously pay a lot closer attention to the slip right here. the lip where you took it off. This is also a way that you can check the thickness of the top of your pot if you aren't sure. Or just to clean up your lip if you're not satisfied with it. You have a wobbly rim. For whatever reason, that's a way that you can fix it. Now it's time to clean off the excess clay from your pot. And to do this, um, I use my wood rib. And so I wet my wood rib, but I don't wet the outside of the pot because that's going to just produce more slip. But you do want this to glide along and not get stuck while it's going down the pot. And you're going to use your inside hand to help support the pressure of the rib. So I'm going to wet it, start at the top, As you can see, I'm taking off some of this clay here at the bottom because you want to remove the excess clay because it's going to make your pot really heavy. This is a trick I saw on an Adam Field video actually and I saw it and I've been doing it ever since because it's just really efficient. Um, so I just cut that little bit off and there's a little rim you can see around, like a little well. And then I'm going to put a little bit of water, like waterfall it down into that well. And then you just take your rib and find the spot where you cut it. And then just lift the clay off. It's as easy as that. <laughs> and then I always go back again and take off that little bit of extra clay that I know is still in the bottom to relieve that weight there. And then you can bring it back up, and I'm using the middle of the rib. I'm not using all of the rib at the same time. And then I just shaped it back up. And again, remove that clay. And then I'm going to pay attention to the lip again. At this point, you can go ahead and shape your mug, if that's something that you want to do. And again, I'm going to be using my wind rib, and then I'm just going to wet it before I use it. And then my inside hand will always be on the inside supporting this rib. and re-wet it as you use it. I forget to do that sometimes if I get too into it, but you want to make sure that you're not tugging that clay too much. Pay attention to the lip. That's just a process that get used to, you'll start doing something else, you'll come back to the lip. Don't use too much water on the lip. Um, if you do, you can go back with the middle rib and reinvent your lip by removing this slip there. And then touch it up one more time. And I'm just cleaning the outside of the pot here with the going to support wherever I'm pushing it. Something I always do is look to the side right here and that way you can like close one of your eyes and you can see the actual form as it will be when it's actually off of the wheel and on the table in use. 
This way you can see if there's any little things that you'd like to change before you take it off the wheel. Now I'm going to just clean the inside a little bit with the metal right here. And then touch up the lip again with no water this time. And that's it. This is how you throw a mug on the wheel.